Former Concorde pilot Captain James Bedforth was only 51 years old when he died after developing complications from a deep vein thrombosis, a DVT, following a flight back from Shanghai to the UK. Delays in diagnosis and treatment could have contributed to his death, said the coroner in a letter to the UK Health Secretary, calling for improved awareness of the need to investigate and treat patients with DVT. Professor Saskia Middeldorp and the team at the Academic Medical Center in Amsterdam, one of the world leading centers for DVT research, are identifying the challenges and finding solutions to improve patient outcomes. I think the DVT impact is enormous. It's under-recognized, but DVT occurs in many patients during many circumstances, so both spontaneously as well as related to all sorts of uh, illnesses or admissions to hospital. And the impact is huge because uh, about 50% uh, of the patients uh, may have lifelong consequences of their DVT in terms of post-traumatic syndrome, but also the need for uh, future preventive measures, including th uh, additional or more intensified thrombosis prophylaxis. And it kills more people, some studies say, than, for instance, uh, patients in traffic accidents or HIV or even infections. So a DVT is a clot that blocks a vein and it typically occurs in the leg. Most often it starts in the distal veins of the calf for instance where there's a lot of valves and there's a lot of velocity issues around those valves and we think that there the blood sort of comes to some turbulence and there's, that's easy to, to get a clot there but the clots can be as long as 30 or, or 40 centimeters even before they start giving symptoms. So the idea is distal to start and blocking the vein, giving all those symptoms of swelling, and it can progress to more proximal. Yeah, the incidence of DVT is estimated to be between one and two per thousand inhabitants. And that means for a small country like the Netherlands, where we have 17 million people, we have around 35,000 patients each year. And in the USA, for instance, the new case is per year is around 900,000. So it's not a disease of older people per se. Um, it can occur to young people, it can even occur to children, and particularly the adolescents, the teenagers. The uh, case fatality rate of VTE is estimated to be around 9%, which is probably lower for DVT alone. But we should also realize that many patients with DVT do have symptomatic or asymptomatic pulmonary embolism. If you speak about risk factors for venous thromboembolism, there's a wide spectrum. On one far end of the spectrum is what we call unprovoked DVT or pulmonary embolism. Essentially, patients developing disease without any risk factor preceding that event. That covers more or less 50% of patients who develop a venous thromboembolism. Why do we want to know if it's provoked or unprovoked? Because that highly drives the risk of it happening again in the future with those with unprovoked events being at the highest risk. At the other end of the spectrum are patients with very highly provoked venous thromboembolism and the most clear example is essentially surgery. Hip or knee arthroplasty surgery are highly thrombogenic operations and those patients who develop DVTs after those procedures are generally at the lowest risk of recurrence. We need to realize that we actually have made major, major progress in the last 20 years. I mean, people with deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, I call them venous thromboembolism, are usually hospitalized for 10 to 14 days. We're put on an IV drip. And so we've moved tremendously, both in the field of the diagnosis of the disease, much more patient friendly and then this treatment change has been you know really really breakthrough after breakthrough first the introduction of low molecular weight heparin which allowed subcutaneous injections and fixed those and then what we have witnessed the last seven eight years ten years is the the DOAC revolution that basically have taken over treatment with vitamin K so today we have somebody that comes to a hospital with a suspected deep vents and pulmonary is usually diagnosed within, let's say, a couple of hours. Most of the cases actually 
you know, 70, 80 percent of the patients actually do not have the disease. So the 20 percent that have confirmed VTE will then be treated. 80, 90 percent of these patients today go out of the hospital, never admitted. So that that treatment has uh, become really, really very patient friendly, very efficient, no overtreatment. One is the big, big unknown, is how long should patients receive treatment. All people should be treated for at least three months. Those that have a provoked venous tumor, so there is a surgery or a period of immobilization, probably it's enough to stop at three months. Then the others, the unprovoked, um, that's where the big question is. Should it be six months or 12 months, should it be longer? And then the third group, clearly patients with persistent risk factors such as cancer, or lupus anticoagulant, those ones probably need to be treated forever. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.